Oh, Bill, I really love you, brother. I I'm glad that you came over and fellowshiped here today with me and that we hammered these things out concerning the gospel. And I see our unity here. We believe in justification by faith alone, that we are justified, independent from law performance. Then we have a complete death to the law where we have no expectation and obligation to be made righteous or justified through it or sanctification. Jesus Christ has become all those things for us, redemption, sanctification, righteousness. We believe that Jesus is our reward, Bill, a beautiful thing, just like he told Abraham. Fear not, Abraham, I am your great and exceeding reward. And that is who Jesus is to us. He's our great exceeding reward, all by faith, Bill. Praise the Lord. But before we make that final handshake of unity in the faith, Bill, I want to just caveat it with one little thing here. Make sure we're on agreement, that we're in the same page here. But Bill, you, you got to believe that you made the right choice. Bill, you got to believe that your salvation was hinged upon your free will decision by which you chose God. And that choosing was the catalyst that opened the entire door to all the blessings of salvation. And that you made that choice, Bill. You got to let me know right here before we continue on. And I don't have to call you a wolf or an antichrist or any of those type of things. I just want to know right now, Bill, did you make that right choice when it came to salvation? Was it you that done it? When anyone else could have done it, Bill, we know that. We know that because the scripture says in John 3, 16, that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And from that, we can form a whole theological perspective, Bill. That people believe on their own free will and everyone has a collective equal opportunity offer to choose Jesus. Everyone could have chosen him just like me and you did, Bill, but they chose not to for different reasons. Reasons I don't want to go into. Reasons of they might not have been smart enough to, to, to think about this kind of stuff, get in the Bible, maybe made the dots of connection what the gospel actually was. Maybe they love their sin too much, Bill. They may love their sin too much, so they just never got into this whole theological God stuff. They never, they weren't like us. They, there wasn't something found in them by which was found in us, and that is that we did seek out God. Now, I know you're going to want to bring up scriptures that there's none who seek after God, but I just want to, first, before you even say anything, Bill, I need to know that you believe in this collective equal opportunity offer by which anyone can choose God can choose Jesus and be saved. And we're ultimately saved by our free will decision in conjunction with what Jesus did on the cross. Those are the two necessary things you must believe and submit to to be considered a true Christian, to be part of the true gospel. You got to believe not just what Jesus did, you got to believe what you did. You got to believe that you made the right choice, that free will decision. So this. This right now is what I need to know for you, Bill, before we can continue on and I can consider you a brother in Christ. Well, it seems like we agree on the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, justification by faith alone. Christ is our sanctification, our reward. But there's things that you have to deal with in the scripture when it comes to how our faith comes about in reality. Was it something that self-originates? Does anything self-originate? Or do all things come from God's hand? We see in the scripture it says, The God who made heaven and earth does not dwell in temples made by human hands, nor is he worshipped by human hands as though he needed anything. For he himself gives life and breath and all things to all people. So it's God who gives all things to all people. Whatever a person has, it's from the hand of God. There's nothing that self-originates. We see Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, By grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself, but it's the gift of God. Faith is not something that self-originates. It's the gift of God, and that's how we should see our faith, as a gift from God, not as a common thing. But something that somebody receives by the grace of God. By grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself, but it's a gift of God. So by God's grace, a person gets a gift of faith. We see the Apostle Paul say this when he says, By the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, not to think highly of yourselves and you ought to think, but with sound sober judgment, as God has dealt to each one of you a measure of faith. So once again, we see that 
faith is not something that self originates. It comes about by the grace of God and God deals it out to people by the grace given to me. I say to every one of you not to think highly of yourselves and you ought to think, but with sound sober judgment as God has dealt to each one of you a measure of faith. So when we believe that the gospel is something that people can collectively and equally have faith in, then the person that has faith in the gospel can think highly of themselves because they can look at other people that don't have faith in the gospel and say, well, they could have faith in Jesus Christ and save themselves just like I did, but they chose not to make the right choice and have faith. And since in that system, a person believes that faith self-originates and that faith saves them and anyone else could have collectively and equally have done that, then that person can think highly of themselves. And that's why Paul is telling us to recognize where faith comes from. It comes from the hand of God, that God deals out a measure of faith. And we also see in scriptures like 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, now I'm going to have to interrupt you right there, Bill. I was afraid of this. I was afraid that you were going to get argumentative on this point when I started talking about it. Now the thing is, Bill, if you don't believe that you made the right choices and you believe a false gospel, if you don't believe that it's your choice that you made by the power of your own will that saved yourself, that you're born of your own will. And I know you're probably going to run to text like John where it says those who are born not of the will nor of the human decision nor of bloodline, but they were born of God. I want to tell you, Bill, I don't got time to dig into these biblical texts. I'm already late for my Wednesday evening service, but there's no clear text in the Bible that say anything about God choosing us for salvation. Well, actually, there's all kinds of texts. You could go to Second Thessalonians, brothers and sisters, we always ought to give thanks to God for you. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. So here we have a clear passage that says that God chose people from the very beginning. He chose people for salvation. Notice how Paul says we always ought to give thanks to God for you. Why? Because God chooses people to be part of the family of God. He chooses people for salvation from the very beginning. We see Paul say that in Ephesians, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. That's from the very beginning. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to adoption according to the kind intention of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace. So once again, we have clear passages of God choosing people for salvation even before the beginning of the world, before men have a will, before they have a choice. Just like you referenced in the book of John, those who were born not of the will of the flesh, nor of will of man, nor of human decision, nor of bloodline, but they were born of God. People are born of God's own choice and will and decision. And so if you take the position that your faith is something that anyone could have collectively and equally done, just like yourself, and your faith and your choice is what saved you, then you would have reason to boast. Before you cut me off earlier, I was quoting that verse to you where Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 and onward, Brethren, consider your own calling. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. But God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And the disbased and the despised things God has chosen. And the things that are not to nullify the things that are. So that no one will boast before God. But by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. So we see here in the scripture it says, Consider your own personal individualized calling that not everybody has received. That God chooses people in the world over others. We see that in these passages, that God chooses some people over others. And it goes on to say the reason why is that so that no one will boast before God. In other words, no one would boast that they saved themselves by their own choice when God is the one doing the choosing and calling some over others. And then it says, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. It is because of him, God, is the reason why we are in Christ Jesus, not because of ourselves, not because of our own will, not because of our own decision, not because of our own choice, but because God's will and because of God's decision, because of God's choice, because of God's personal individualized calling. 
And so this is important. We see the scripture laying these things out that we should not boast before God in our own. I'm just going to have to stop you right there, Bill. I just knew you were going to be argumentative. For some reason, I kept the best for last, the best question for last. You know, and maybe now I should see, maybe I should have brought this out on the forefront before we even talked about the gospel, what Jesus did, his death, burial, resurrection, how we're justified by faith, our agreement on all the things in Christ and the total inheritance. Maybe before talking about all of that, maybe I should have got right to the heart of the matter. And that was, did you make that right choice to save yourself? And you disagree. You think it was God. You want to boast in God. You want to give him the credit for everything. Well, let me tell you, that makes God unloving. That means if God chose, let me tell you something. If God is the one that chose, he's wicked. That makes him unloving. That makes him a, that wicked puppet master. And it also makes you a wicked wolf for believing it, for believing and boasting in God. Yes, you are, sir. You are a wicked wolf. And I bet you want to quote a lot more scriptures, like where Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go bear fruit, and your fruit should remain. If you were of the world, the world would love its own, because I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. And then I bet you want to point out that ripple effect all the way out into the New Testament, where you see the Apostle Paul says, Brothers and sisters, beloved of God, we know that God chose you, because our gospel came not merely with words, but with power, deep conviction in the Holy Spirit. Or places in the Bible where he says, I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, that they also may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus, and with it the hope of eternal glory. Or places where he always addressed the saints as those chosen by God. Bill, I bet you want to go through all those verses, and I bet you want me to give a coherent explanation of those verses. Well, I don't have to, Bill. Because I know how I feel about him. I know who I know him who I have received. And if it doesn't feel right to me, Bill, I don't care. All the biblical text in the world isn't going to change me. It's not going to change my mind or convince me. I know that would make it wicked if, if Jesus was the one who chose us for salvation. God, did. I know that would make him wicked. So what those verses are saying... It's the very opposite of what they appear to say, Bill. You ever thought of that, Bill? Have you ever thought that those verses actually seem the very opposite of what they say? That when Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you, what he's really saying is that you people did choose me. And that's the reason why I chose you. But you never thought of that, Bill, right? Well, that all the verses that say choose, that all mean the same thing. Anytime you see the verses that say God chose, God chose, God chose, which you'll see repetitively throughout the scripture. Bill, you're going to see that as a theme from the Old Testament on into the New. And all that means, Bill, is that God knew you would choose him. That's all it means, Bill. That God looked down through the corridors of time. He knew that Chris would choose Jesus in 1975. And so then, on the basis of Chris choosing him, he then chose Chris. And, and same on and same on throughout all of reality. Uh, Carl in 1999, Sally Sue in 2008. Every time someone makes that free will, beautiful choice to choose God to save themselves, then God chooses them, Bill. That's when, that's when they become chosen. Now I know the scriptures appear to say that God is doing the choosing, but again, you got to read in this free will presupposition into the Bible, into the gospel. You're not a real Christian. I'm telling you, Bill. You are out there on the fringes. Hardly anyone believes what you believe. I mean, Mormons believe what I believe. Jehovah Witnesses believe what I believe. Catholics believe what I believe. Every single cult, along with every false gospel preacher that stands under the banner of Christianity, Believes what I believe. And just because these other cults and stuff, and they do have false gospels, they have false teachings, doesn't mean they're wrong on this, Bill. And let me tell you, Bill, I'd rather walk into a church where they're teaching a false gospel and boasting in their own personal choice than to walk into a church that you'd probably accept where people are praising God for the, for being saved. That, that It was God that saved them. That was God that gave them a gift of faith. It was God that dealt to them 
a measure of faith by which they're saved. I bet you love to drag me into one of those churches. I bet you would, you wolf. You'd, you'd like to drag me into such a wolf pack like that. I can see the children getting infected with this stuff. Saying, yeah, God chose me to be saved. You know, it was his grace that saved me from all eternity. And you probably bring out verses that says he saved us and called us with a holy calling, not because of our own works, but because of his own purposes of grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. I bet you people are using those verses and infecting these young minds, telling them that it's the grace of God by which they've been saved and not by their own works. And this was purposes of grace that God instituted in himself before the ages in the world began and before the commencement of time. I bet you'd like these kids to think that God loved them personally that much. Well, let me tell you something, Bill. I've been driving around for the last 20 years, and you've seen it on my bumper sticker. It says, Jesus loves you. It says, Jesus loves you. That's a universal claim to every single person, that every single person is loved the same with the salvific, equal, collective love. And so I can say to someone like Anton LaVey, who was a saint and worshiper, do you know that Jesus loves you just as much as this little child who's trusted Jesus? That this little ch ch child that has trusted Jesus, Jesus loves you. Hitler, I could point out any wicked, ungodly person that's never put their faith in Christ. And I could say to that person, Jesus loves you just as much as he loves anyone that's put their faith in him. And I'll tell you, Bill, the warm fuzzies that people get from that every time, you know, that's that's real effective. That emotional feeling, that's what I derive my theology on. That's how I, uh, I bring people to Christ. That's right. I bring them to Christ, Bill. I'm the one through the preaching, through the things I've said. Well, I, I'm going to have to interrupt you there because now you're boasting. Not only did you save yourself by your own choice, but you're now getting other people to make the right choice. And it's you doing it. It's you saving those people. And so you believe that you're causing the increase and in the growth to the planting and the watering and the gospel. But Paul said, I planted the pile of water, but it was God who gave the increase. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God who causes the growth. So you're taking credit and you're boasting that you're causing increase and in growth to the gospel when it says only God causes increase, only God causes growth. And he only causes that in those who are given to him. Jesus says, all the Father gives to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no wise cast out. So in the preaching of the gospel, he gives increase and causes growth to all those who are given to him. All who are given to him he will come to me. So Jesus speaks about all those who are given before they even come to him. Before they even come, Jesus says, all of them will come. Every single one of them. They come through the proclamation of the gospel. All the Father gives to me will come to me. He then goes on to say, and the one who comes to me, I will by no one. Bill, I'm going to have to stop you right there. Bill, for one, I'm late for my free will meeting. Okay? We were going to talk about this tonight, actually at my meeting tonight. and. You're not welcome, Bill. You're not welcome. We have a bubble there where we learn and we recognize right away anyone who disagrees, anyone that's not boasting in choice and, and not believing that faith is something that self originates. We 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 quickly mark and avoid those people. We point them out as wolves. And as soon as we realize people aren't agreeing with our teachings, they're just being argumentative. They're just argumentative people. Who are speaking harsh words against God at this point. You understand that, Bill? When you say that God is the one that saved you and chose you and you use the verses from the Bible, I know that, that they're there. They, there's tons of them. And like I said, I wish I had more time to dig into those biblical texts and tell you what they actually mean, but I got to get going. But when you say that God chose you to be saved and it's all by grace and that he gave you the faith, that's harsh words against God, Bill. And you'll answer for that on the day of judgment. You're going to answer for those harsh words of telling God that he saved you and gave you the faith. I'm late for my free will meeting, Bill. Wish I had more time. Talk to you later.